Hey everybody, Doug Kenny here from Relentless and Unstoppable. I'm with my co-host Brendan Monk and we have Gina with us. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great, Doug. How are you? Doing fabulous. Brendan, where Hi, are you Gina. at at the moment? I'm at um, the Mount Brumby Sanctuary in uh, just north of Melbourne, Victoria. So, Australia, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, and where are you at, Gina? I'm in Bakersfield, California, two and a half hours north of Los Angeles, California. Wow. Oh, nice. Yeah. nice. What is it like to live there? Talking to me? Yeah. Well, it grows on you. Let's just put it that way. It's okay. It's a little warm here, actually a little hot, but summers uh, are, winters and spring are very beautiful here. So glad to be here. Awesome to hear. So uh, tell everybody a bit of what you do. Well, um, about four or five years ago, um, I noticed that a lot of little stray dogs would come into my fitness center. And I didn't realize that there was a shelter down the road. And once my fitness center got closed because of COVID, I got a little bit more involved in uh, saving these animals, finding out where they were coming from. And I got more involved in finding out that they were coming from certain areas in Bakersfield that were the dogs are getting dumped or certain areas in Bakersfield that the dogs are getting dumped. So I formed a, um, formed a rescue. It's not a nonprofit, but we work under a nonprofit. It's called RAD, Rescue and Abandoned Dogs. And I know I couldn't do it by myself, so I recruited about four or five other women. And um, like I said, we've been hauling about 3,500 pounds of food out daily, but in a month, the dogs that we go to in the, this little 65 mile radius, um, they eat it all. And that's just in one section. So we have two trappers out of the four women we do try to trap them, secure them, and trap them. Or from there, it becomes a headache because there's no place to put the dogs. And in a town of almost a million people, we only have three fosters. And it makes it very difficult. We were putting them in a boarding place, but then the boarding place kept changing the rules, you guys, and said, hey, these dogs need to have their shots um, five to 10 days before you board. Well, we don't have any place to put these dogs five to 10 days before. It used to be we could get the dogs vetted and bring them over there. So we're really scrambling right now. It's very, very difficult. Um, we are working on um, renting some kennels at a place in Bakersfield that's been here forever. It's called Alpha Canine. And we have a fundraiser for that. We're trying to um, fix up 10 to 15 kennels by putting tarps on them, reinforcing the bottoms. So once the girls trap the dogs, we would get them their shots and then we would take them up there and they could hang out until we found a find a rescue. But what we see on a daily basis, I would liken it to Vietnam. And I'd like to say I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. It's horrific. They're not just injured and starving or emaciated. They are... Um, well, they're dumped just like empty beer cans. So we probably get, personally, I get, and I know the girls get, I probably get 20 to 30 calls a day from people that want me to help get their dog. Or can I do this? Can I do that? Can I? And really, you guys, it's it kind of gives you PTSD after a while. Not that we're going to stop because we have bigger and better things ahead. We've got this um, sanctuary we're working on where we're also working on a new spay and neuter clinic. Um, so we're going forward. We're definitely not going backwards. But in the meantime, no matter what happens, these dogs have to eat. And it's like the ocean coming. One more dog, one more dog, one more dog. Yesterday, one of the ladies found three sets of puppies Um dumped in various locations, you know, like a trash bin, 
and behind a dumpster, and they each had probably 200 ticks on them. And um, and we're like doctors too. We take the medication out there. We've got Brevecto. We got flea and tick. Um, we have food. We've got traps. We have as much as we can, but um, it's pretty sad. I'd like to sugarcoat it, but I can't. That's so unfortunate. Nutshell, That's really unfortunate. So, what are yeah. you doing? to help them in their efforts of finding homes and all that? Well, um, let's say that any given dog, a small dog, we can get out quickly. A poodle, a poodle, a, a chihuahua, we can get those out pretty much in a week and we can find fosters for them. But like Doug, your dog in that size and bigger, like my animals that are also rescues, it could take months. And you know, the fosters, you know, they're only good. I mean, I shouldn't say they're only good, but they've got lives too. And they've got to go on vacation and they've got kids. So we struggle, like I said, with finding fosters. So for us, it's just a time constraint. If we could set these dogs somewhere, feed them, take care of them, play with them, and just know that we'll eventually get them out. But we're always under a time crunch. And, uh, just happened today one of our one of our longest what well, not the longest but mr chunk big pit bull dump there was a huge tick tock done on him he had a chain so tight around his neck his eyes were bulging no, and it was horrible got him down south to a vet through a friend fixed him all up got him neutered and he's been staying with a very awesome trainer that's thirty five hundred dollars a month and that's one dog. So right now he's the twelve thousand dollar dog. But guess what happened today? I got him a rescue just today. Mister Chunk is has left the building. <laughs> so that's what we face. So the rescues are all full. I'm not knocking them. I'm not. And the shelters can't even do their jobs because the dogs that get shoved in their door, you know, they can't really even shelter the animals. So it's just, it's a really horrific war zone out here. And I would, like I said, I wish I was embellishing, but I'm not. <laughs>